All right, how is it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Forward Thinking Founders, where we're talking to founders about their companies, their visions for the future, and how the two collide. Today, I'm very excited to be talking to Michael Radichuk, who is one of the co-founders of Whistle. Michael, welcome to the show. Hey, Matt. Thanks for having me. How are you? I am doing pretty fantastic. How about you? Not bad. Um, I think we're in an exciting space right now with... Uh, Sports expanding, just not throughout the United States, but throughout the world. Um, officiating is is a big aspect of it, and uh, it's an exciting time to to help the industry grow and improve. Well, kind of with that, let's just dive into what you're working on in this industry. So, so for people who don't know, what is Whistle? So, Whistle is a marketplace that helps officials and leagues and tournaments connect with one another and help service one another. Uh, we provide a set of tools, not just to leagues and officials themselves, but also associations who assign referees, who also train referees uh, to communicate. So whether that's through messaging or calling uh, to provide feedback to one another, um, whether that's uh, the assigner or the mentor or the league letting referee know what they can improve upon or the referee providing feedback to uh, the league and letting them know what their experience was like, if there were any issues, and helping essentially provide quality assurance and, and in return improve the experience for everyone that's involved in the process. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, I hear you now. Got it. Cool. Uh, I'll cut this out. Um, cool. So I think this is fascinating and something that I want to dive into is uh, is this a specific vertical for a sport like is it just for frisbee just for basketball just for football or are you industry agnostic how does someone you know think about what sport to you is with this with whistle sure it's a, it's a great question and initially the concept started as just soccer because for my background I've, I've been officiating soccer since I was 14 years old so more than half of my life and initially, I had local coaches in Orange County, California, uh, to be specific, asking me to come out and, and referee games. Um, it expanded into other sports. Uh, leagues started reaching out. Um, other states started reaching out, looking for ways to bring in referees and, and help provide them more games. And uh, it grew into different sports. So you can count your big four or five, like soccer, basketball, flag football, um, volleyball, soft, soft uh, pitch softball. Um, and, and we currently uh, are able to support over 13 different sports, including kickball um, and, and tackle football and rugby. So it's expanded into, into multiple different sports, um, but, but initially it just started out as one. So Yeah, I hope that answers the question. I'm not, yeah, I'm not really no, sure to go no, from that. Definitely. <laughs> def definitely. So you, it's pretty impressive that you have built this to go through, it sounds like, over a dozen different vertical sports. Um, I, I'm kind of intrigued. How did you, like, how did the founding of this company happen? Like, where did you get the idea? And uh, kind of what's the big why for you behind this company? Sure. I think the biggest thing was um, to provide an opportunity for referees to, to find more games and to have an ability to experience um, different environments and improve as a referee, but also for leagues who didn't have a direct way of connecting with, with someone who could provide officials for their sports. Um, now you have your, your regular assigners, um, which are pretty much found through through an association so you have your sports associations whether it's for soccer for football for basketball and generally a league works with an assigner to help schedule these officials now when this idea came about um, it was just leagues reaching out to me directly so I built a network um, and, and this grew into whistle where leagues and coaches could just reach out directly to whistle. Um, now that doesn't eliminate associations in any way because 
they're an essential aspect to helping train officials and and making sure that um, they're up to date on the new rules and and laws for the specific sport but but the idea of creating a network where everyone could essentially coexist and help one another to service the sports industry that was the whole reason behind starting um, the company that's uh, that's awesome i love the story behind it i kind of want to dig into how does one interact with the software or the product can you walk through kind of one of your personas one of their experiences of what it's like using using your platform like um actually to back up who uh who is would you say your target audience is it league organizers is it friends who just want to organize a league within themselves who are you targeting with this we we want everybody <laughs> anybody and everybody um to, to use whistle as much as possible that would be the ultimate goal but initially again it started out with um, scrimmages whether it's a league who is in the off season who's requesting referees whether it was an adult league whether it's rec or maybe an amateur semi-professional league or or maybe it's um, a local youth league um, and then again you have your um, regular occurrences of of one-time events where you and your friends are getting together to play five on five basketball and they need a referee to come out and referee the game. So it can be as far as a game that is, is on a Monday night every week as a, as a recreational league, or it can be somebody who is just wanting to have a good time, have a referee come out and oversee their events. But, when it comes to the other side of, of the spectrum, which is the referees, we want referees um, that, again, have experience, that have refereed for a long time, uh, but we also want people to come in and uh, join into the officiating world. Maybe it's somebody who has played sports their whole life and they, don't, they no longer have the capability to play, but they want to officiate, they want to get into the officiating aspect of the game. Um, we want to provide them the tools to get trained, to purchase a uniform, to get mentorship, and then have the ability to find games to go out and officiate. So there's there's two sides to, to yep. the aspect of, of the app. Definitely, definitely. I'd, I'd love to now hear, you now you've come... Uh, uh, you know, pretty far so far, just, you know, just from an idea or kind of something that you've wanted to, to make. Um, but what is the big vision here? Um, if you look out 10 years from now, 20 years from now, what do you think th this product, what do you think Whistle could, could, could turn into? Our, our grand vision is to be the one-stop shop for all officiating needs. Um, again, for, for somebody, for an organizer, we'll call an organizer somebody who needs referees. Um, so for the organizer to have a one-stop shop to schedule referees, to communicate with referees, to pay out the referees, and also to provide feedback to the referees. And then we also want to be a one-stop shop for the referees as well, where they can come in, they can either find games. If they're a first-time referee, they can get trained. Uh, they can apply for games, they can purchase the uniform, and then they get paid out through direct deposit. Um, the way the current industry is set up is there are multiple ways to do transactions. It could be a check, which takes either multiple weeks, or you have to chase down the person that cuts the check. Um, there's also the cash, which requires referees to come onto the field and uh, chase both teams for cash. And then there's also ways to pay via direct deposit through um, various platforms. But again, that, that costs additional fees as well for the referee to use. So the way we've created our platform is we've tried to eliminate those extra steps and kind of be the one-stop destination. And again, long-term vision, we want to continue to be the one-stop destination for all of these needs. So that's, that's awesome. And you're addressing some 
seems to be some friction in, in the market. Uh, I am curious, do you think at all of how it, this might go in a very different direction, but um, in regards to the, the payments at all, have you thought about the future of money in the form of cryptocurrency or Libra or that or blockchain stuff? Is that on your radar or are you, or are you thinking about that at all in regards to uh, your vision? Um, or are you not as much into kind of the crypto world at the moment? So it's interesting you bring that up because we have an audience that maybe ranges from somebody who's very tech savvy, who maybe understands what crypto cryptocurrency is, but then you have to you also have the referees that maybe on the older end, and that doesn't mean they don't know what cryptocurrency is, but uh, maybe they're not up to date on on those times. So for us, we have to bring in. Uh, maybe a currency, which is a dollar per se, um, that everybody understands. Um, now, it's not something we, we probably will ever bring in to our platform, but I, I won't say never, never say never. Um, it's very much possible, but it's not, it's not something we've considered. But it's an interesting um, aspect that, that you bring up as well, because as, as the different monetary values come in, it's, it's very much possible. Um, the toughest part right now is having um, leagues or organizations to get away from paying cash or paying check um, so that referees can be paid via direct deposit, um, that, which is one a lot quicker and it's less messy paperwork and you're able to track where your money is going. Yeah, I can imagine that is just a more efficient process. Um, so I, I understand why you're trying to get there. Um, well, cool. I, I want to transition the conversation a little bit to tactics on how you uh, or ultimately grow Whistle, uh, how you recruit, whether it be, you know, the, the referees or, or users or investors. I, I love just kind of high level to start. Um, how do you think about user acquisition for, for Whistle? And then we can drill down from there. Sure. There is uh, there is multiple ways that we can acquire a user, and for us again, a user is a league, and and a referee as well, and and we'll start with the referee side of things. Um, right now, any referee can join our platform. Um, there's no cost to it at all at this time, um, as we build out functionality and add additional premium features. Um, there may be some costs related to that. Um, but at this time, it's completely free. Um, we also partner with associations who have a large referee database to use our platform and assigning platform, uh, which they find uh, very handy um, in, in regards to communication, um, through text message and phone calling, and again, paying out referees via direct deposit. Um, and then we also partner with leagues who maybe have been using spreadsheets or or paper or email or text messages via their phone and they need a tool um, to help them streamline that process and throughout this whole experience we're able to um, obtain our database by bringing on referees from different associations and locations onto our platform so that's that's one set of things um, for the other one which is the leagues um, and organizations who want to use our platform which are the organizers, um, again, there's no fees to join. Um, the way our model is set up is when referees are paid out, we charge a service fee. That's an add-on to what the referee is gonna be paid. And that's how Whistle um, collects its revenue. Um, and then we also partnered with different platforms like Sports Engine, for an example, um, where certain leagues use sports engine to create their schedule and whistle allows them to integrate the schedule into the app with a few with a few clicks um, which eliminates friction it eliminates time as to how much you have to spend on importing the schedule um, and it allows the referees to sign up automatically so those are kind of the multiple ways of of how we're currently uh, bringing on users uh, we're operating very lean at this time um, we're not spending any marketing dollars. Uh, I'm doing a lot of networking in regards to whether it's going to events 
or um, using Twitter, which is, I think, is a, a sacred CRM, which a lot of people maybe do not use at this time to, to find um, and improve their user base, which I definitely recommend for, for any new, new business owner or startup or even a current business owner um, to use Twitter to, to acquire more users. But those are ultimately the, the different things that we're doing right now to accrue our, our user base. And how do you think about channels in regards to efficiency? You might not be there yet in traction, meaning like I know there's at some point, usually it's like post product market fit that you have to identify the most profitable channels, double down, identify the non-profitable channels, et cetera. But when you're in the early stages, where I think most of the listeners are in the earlier stages, um, how do you just decide where to put your resources, resources being time or money? Is there a framework to think about that? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of trial and error that goes into it. Um, and, and maybe some figure it out sooner than later. Um, but at, at this time, we really want to concentrate on uh, getting reoccurring leagues that constantly put on games so that users are on our platform um, operating and providing feedback and, and there's revenue coming in and out um, versus concentrating on somebody who maybe is just a, a, a one event that happens um, once a year. Um, but again, uh, we don't want to neglect those users either because everything that goes into the experience, um, users are going to provide feedback. Um, they're going to tell whether they like the service or not. So sometimes it's, it's tough to say no. Um, part of this trial and error process also has been uh, getting to know where your referees are. Um, so maybe if there is a one-time event in a certain location, um, you're still able to service it because your user um, base for referees is, is greater there um, versus you know, another area where you can tell a user right away that, hey, your event is, is two days away we don't have any referees in this area, but um, please come back to us in the future and we might be able to help out. So I think also the biggest uh, aspect of this, um, maybe user experience and feedback is, is making sure you try and, and, and answer to every request that comes in uh, because people, you know, they want to hear, they want to know that, you know, it's an actual person that's, um, behind the screen. It's not just a robot talking to them. So um, there's a lot of the, a lot of trial and error that goes into it, but I hope what I've explained kind of gives an idea as to, you know, what needs to be done to, um, to attract the audience as well. Absolutely. That is extremely useful and, and yeah, good to know. I have one more question in regards to user acquisition and then I have a couple more, then we'll wrap it up. So Oftentimes, you know, every once in a while, there are new distribution channels that open up. For example, in 2006, there was whatever was out there, then Twitter opened up, and then the people that got on Twitter, Twitter are now major winners, right, uh, and have millions of followers. Then, you know, there's, there's podcasting, there's TikTok, there's random different distribution channels that if you pick right, are going to be a huge uh, kind of reason your startup grows at least a little bit do you how do mm -hmm. you do you put weight on new platforms and new distribution platforms or do you more want to wait to see how they pan out before you invest time and money into newer platforms that aren't as proven um i think i think that's honestly matt off the well i don't know off the record if you're recording this or not but um it's a, it's a, that's a tough question for me to answer right now because um, I do a lot of cold calling that's just literally by Googling, you know, where the league is located or, or, or maybe an association. I directly reach out to them through that method. And the only other platform I currently use is, is Twitter to, to, to build new user acquisition. So I'm not sure how much insight that gives into to what you're asking. Well, um, I want to point something out there that you just mentioned, I, which is actually really important. I think a lot of newer entrepreneurs think they need to be everywhere. They think they got to be on Twitter, on Facebook, on blogging, on podcasting, on YouTube, all the channels. But what you just mm -hmm. said is really important. 
in that you're not you don't do any of it all you do is is a couple of channels you own them and you don't do the easy right. channels right you're doing you're going cold and that is but and but you're owning it and that's what's working and i think that's just admirable and very powerful to know that sometimes you just got to put in the time and put in the effort and do the hard work in order to grow it's not always an easy platform or a shift that makes it easy so i appreciate your answer i really like that no, I, a hundred percent in agreement and and it's tough um i think just being being a salesperson from my previous life and out of college um i tried using different avenues to to try and get a hold of somebody um to find different leads but as as i've experienced the process and you know kind of learning what sales really is it, it, it really is it does come down to just honing down maybe two or three specific tools and for me it's been google and and twitter those are the biggest things and occasional facebook groups um where it's a specific targeted audience maybe it's it's baseball umpires or maybe it's soccer referees or it's basketball referees where i can directly connect with the community and and provide feedback and and most of the time you know right away if if people are either about the concept or 100 percent against it so those those are the really the main things that i currently use to to get to the audience yeah i love that uh yeah i love i just love the rawness well i appreciate the conversation i think what you're building with whistle is interesting and as someone that loves playing ultimate frisbee and and also kickball two kind of obscure sports but sports i i see the value and i see i see where this could go and it kind of leads me to my last question in that you know when you're a founder of a company you can use all the help you can get right it, it's hard starting the company is hard yeah. scaling the company is hard so my question for you is how can the forward thinking founders community help you you got all these listeners that are that are waiting for this question. I've asked it now like for the last 20 episodes. So they're waiting, they're willing to help, ready to help. So how can we help? Well, that, that, that's a great question. I think there's two parts to that. And, and one is um, I'm, I'm very passionate about officiating. I think people really should get into it, whether, whether you're in, in high school or in college or, or maybe even younger or older. Um, I think it's an, an important industry that needs help at this time. Uh, we provide the tools at Whistle to do that, to, to train, to find ways to connect with a community where you could referee games um, to get feedback. So if you are an official um, or maybe not even an official at this time who wants to get into it, we'd love to talk to you. We'd, we'd love to get your feedback. We'd love to get your ideas. Um, as to how we can improve the experience and even tell you, you know, what our, what our goals are for the first team feature. And the second part to this question is uh, we recently released our, our seed invest campaign. Um, obviously as a, as a startup, as a growing startup, technology is a big aspect of the experience and we're trying to raise funds so we can improve the platform, add additional features. And, and we've opened up the, the seed invest campaign to, Anybody, anyone can invest in Whistle at this time, uh, but also anybody that's passionate about sports and wants to help in this industry. Again, we want to hear from them as well um, to see what we can do, how we can improve the experience and, and get this rocket ship to, to get moving as far as you know, we imagine. All right. Well, you all heard it here first. Thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. I really appreciate it. And I'm interested to see what is going to happen with Whistle. Best of luck with your, with your crowdfunding campaign. And uh, again, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Matt. Thanks for having me. For having me.